Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're back. I have a feeling this is going to be one of the all-time great episodes. Oh, really? You've already yeah. had some sort of, like, premonish on this one? Yeah, because i got nothing planned. Right, so you just... We don't know. There's that yeah. unknown element to it. I was watching a... Uh, uh, you know, Rick Rubin, the audio producer guy, did all the Chili Peppers, did some right. Sabbath stuff, did, did okay. Jay-Z, you name an artist, he's worked on their best album. He did an interview with um, Anderson Cooper of CNN fame, and at the start, this wasn't the interviewer bringing this up, this was Rick Rubin. He said, hey, just before we start, do you mind if we just meditate for a moment just so that we know that we're here? And he just sort of said, so do you mind just meditating with me i thought we'd give it a go just to see if it works yeah okay i love so that what is it? i'm not... just having a quick look at him frederick j rubin or rick rubin he's a jesus looking character isn't he you, you don't know him come on man. no you're you didn't you play drums yeah you're a hack is he a drummer no 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 he's just the biggest name in music producing yeah the biggest name I didn't know. I don't know any. Producers. Well, you're on his Wikipedia page. Why don't you just scroll the first paragraph to see what kind of artists he's worked with? Just the first, yeah, the okay. first, the first bit where it says Rick Rubin is a music producer, well known for producing music with such acts as he helped popularize hip hop by producing records for such acts as the Beastie Boys, Run DMC, Public Enemy, a bit of Flavor Flav action in there, LL Cool J. You got Lady Gaga in there. So it says other pop. Heavy metal, including Metallica, Slayer, Alternative Rock, Chili Peppers, Rage Against the Machine, mm-hmm. Strokes, ticking a lot of boxes. Weezer, yep, ticking Audio a lot of Slave, boxes. Aerosmith, yep. Linkin Park, System of a Down. Who hasn't he worked with? Well, that's the the list is shorter. Yeah, of the people he hasn't worked with who are you know big in the game. Um, okay, so my point about that whole was we've already off track. Yeah. My point yeah. was he started that interview by instigating a meditative mm. state with Anderson Cooper, who, for all like intents and purposes, looks like a you know a media stiff. You know, and Rick Rubin's the opposite. He's a free spirit Jesus guy. And during the interview itself, he's actually it's hilarious. During the interview, he kind of sort of let slip that his main job is just kind of sleeping in the studio whilst listening to the music that's being done and he just knows what sounds good. It's not – he has no technical capabilities. He has no studio proficiency. All he has he's got a gift. are ears that he says – That work. He says, I just know what sounds good. What a pretentious load of wank that is, just as a statement. I, I get it. He's really good at what he does, but that's such a wanky thing to say. Like, I know what sounds – Yeah. anyway, it's all subjective, obviously. He's just – he's got a better read on what the mass is like, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Well, at least he claims to have a better claims read. To, how, did yeah. he, how did he get that – how did he sort of establish himself it's as clearly one the of best those things. Ears? It's clearly one of those things that he was sort of sitting on the side of some musical projects and he said, you know what you should do? You should change that note there to this note. And they go, oh, my God, that just made the song. You're a genius. Why don't we give you some money for that? Um, so that's so that's kind of my thinking. Laugh, you all right? Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Um, does that sound good? No. Maybe we can get Rick Rubin to. Yeah, get him to do something with it. Yeah, yeah. he could yeah, turn it into a, a hip-hop song. Yeah. Make a so, song out of it. He started the interview. I'm going back to it. He started the interview yeah. and he's like, I just want to make sure we're here in the moment. I thought, mm. again, sounds like pretentious wank when you say it. But upon finishing this moment of reflection before they began the interview, um, Anderson Cooper lets out a bit of a, wow, that was different. Kind of, whoa, where am I now? Like, you know, fuck that. Just. Just so you spark want to up a joint, with me. you know. Just yeah, spark up a meditate. joint with Anderson Cooper. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of that. It's not good audio yeah. listening. No, it's not good podcast yeah. material. But mm. in context, um, I think that uh, a bit of silence is fine. Uh, and I wouldn't, I, you know, I don't know what I, I don't know what's going on. Well, I mean, Can I we, meditate every day. Yeah, so you'd be pretty good at this then. How do how do we do this? How do we start? What do I do? Well, I'd focus on your breathing to begin okay, with. I no, think that's an easy form of meditation. Right, but we're talking about a quick, you know, 10-second meditation. Yeah, no, just no, okay. Very, we'll do this, right? Yep, go on. Breathe in through your nose for about yep, six seconds. 
Yep. Hold at the top. Out through the nose. Hold. In through the nose. Hold. Out through the nose. This is just breathing. It is, but it's controlled breathing. So you forget that your breath, breathing can be done both by your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. So you, mm. normally you don't think mm. about breathing, right? Mm. True, that's true. So you can actually use it as a gateway. By consciously breathing, you can influence your, your unconscious body. Mm. Or is it the other you, way you around? Can do, no, no. Is well, this the unconscious ways. body trying to like get in on the action, get in on the breathing so, action? A little bit. So if you get into a cold shower, when you have a cold shower, your, your natural body reaction is to, and you normally start breathing very shallowly, shallowly and hyperventilating. But if you, de- if you breathe deeply, you override, you sort of signal to your body that everything's okay. Mm. And you start feeling a lot more comfortable. But wouldn't you agree, and I know we're going into sort of Wim Hof territory here, but wouldn't you agree that sort of the shivers when the cold water hits you is akin to touching the hot stove? It's a natural biological thing because, yeah, it's cold and, yeah, that's hot. Um, are 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 we at the point now where we have to start tricking ourselves into saying we're not feeling what we are feeling or what we never feeling what we were feeling or was it just the expectation is the sort of main driver of the action what are we talking about here i don't know all i know is what i know through personal experience Mm. and so i try different things and see what works Mm. even if it's not actually doing anything and i think it's doing something and it's having an effect on me because of the placebo effect Mm. still a valid effect Agreed. So I just I just keep trying different things. Um, okay. I enjoy meditation, and yes. I find when you regulate your breathing, it does create a very relaxed state. I should probably we should probably should do it before we jump on the podcast. So right. I'm normally pretty amped up before we start. Right, but is that a good idea? I'll, I might be thinking a bit more clearly. Mm, I might be okay. slightly more intelligible. Maybe. Oh, really? Perhaps. After a bit of a after a bit of a medi. Maybe. Mm, okay. As I it's said, maybe I just need to. Yeah. Give it a go. Go on then. I mean, it worked for Rick Rubin. He seemed to be really into medita- meditation. Now, on the – just outside of looking in, anyone – like it might be just the part of sort of the stiff upper lip culture that hasn't died yet, but I would view someone who says, oh, I, oh, I love meditating. I need to meditate. I'd, that's a bit of a red flag for me. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So – you can't relax. What's going on? Uh, in your normal life, you're not relaxing enough. Is your life really stressful? What's going on? Like, what? Do you, why do you need this gateway mm. to relax or whatever it is or make you feel good, I guess? I think people do it to make them feel good. Yeah, meditation's an altered state of consciousness. Mm. You're actually we all love dipping those. below. Yes, exactly. All love that. I think a lot of people are trying to get that from, from other sources. Mm-hmm. And there's a natural remedy. I think the Beatles um, got into transcendental meditation or some of them did and just never touched drugs again. I think they found a better, cleaner, greener high, I guess. Yeah. Maybe we can get them on the show. Maybe we can reach out to them. Yeah, get a couple of them. Maybe we can get Rick Rubin and a couple of the Beatles on. Yeah, you're setting your, your... you're setting quite high. That's good. Maybe get them on in conjunction. They can talk music together. We'll just sort of sit off to the side, um, let them chat away. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll call Rick and we'll call the Beatles, the surviving members of the Beatles. We'll get them. We'll send them a letter. Actually, Ringo Starr is no longer receiving letters. Do you remember that episode of The Simpsons where Ringo is answering everyone's letters? To dear Marge, thank you so much for saying that you enjoyed the out. All that sort of shit. That's yeah, real yeah. life. Like he was doing that. He was handwriting, replying to every single letter that he received up That's until a about time job. Yeah, up until about four years ago. 
and it was what hilarious. I, I've just told this up. story before. I'm going to tell you again. I'm yeah. going to tell the story again. He announced on Twitter. He came out on Twitter. It was around Christmas time. I could be wrong on all the details here, but I guarantee you I'm getting the crux of this right. He came out and he was like, hey, hey, everyone, peace and love, peace and love. I will not be responding to any letters sent after December 31st. I'm not doing it anymore. Peace and love, peace and love, Ringo kind of thing. He's, I think he signed off in his in his Twitter post. Um, and I loved that as a bit of a, uh, a way of getting, you know, you made a deal with the public. Hey, send me a letter. I'll send you one back. And you never counted on being in the Beatles, I guess. Or maybe you didn't count on the Beatles being as successful as they were. But how many people did he respond to? Oh, it'd be millions. If we're talking over the course of 60 years. He was doing it up until the pandemic. So 2020 from, say, 1967 to 2020, minimum. <laughs> minimum. Okay, so yeah, 2008... Ringo Starr begged for oh no he he begged for his fans to stop sending him fan mail in the post begging he opted for something else at the end peace and love peace and love I'm changing my address and fuck off everybody um, and I still think he just went on and kept doing stuff like voicing the narrator of Thomas the Tank Engine and stuff like that did he is that Ringo bro bro your cultural knowledge is real lacking. You know yeah, more yeah, about man. sort of no. This is why this is why we're a good like combo. The current one, you didn't know this Ringo Starr was the voice of Thomas the Tank Engine. Like no, now you say, I loved, I loved Thomas the Tank Engine. Well, try and try and imagine any part of narration and just picture Ringo, and you'll see it. Yeah, mm. I don't think I know what Ringo looks like. The fat control. I don't know what he sounds like. But I loved Thomas the Tank Engine. I had a deprived mm. upbringing in that my parents mm. weren't musical at all. Mm. So your music came from Thomas the Tank Engine and by extension, Ringo Starr. And no. friends. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Parents were musically just, inclined? Not into, they're both jiu What's your dad's favourite band? Uh, he likes Queen, but it was only after I started listening to music. He and was what, like, about, oh, he what about your mum's favourite band? I couldn't tell you one. Um, mm. I couldn't tell you one. Wow. And she used to always criticize the pumpkins to me. She was like, oh, special pumpkins. She goes, oh, look, they, this band is terrible. You can't understand what he's saying. You can't she's hear right. the lyrics. She's kind of right. Well, I went right. to a you thousand rock shows in my early, I mean, my late teens, early 20s. I went to thousands of rock shows, never heard, never understood a lyric at any show that I went to. Yeah. I, I was trying to explain that to my mum being in a band. I was like, the lyrics don't matter, it's the way you do it. Maybe that's what we should subscribe to. That is counterintuitive, though. You can understand your mum looking at you down the down the end of her nose, going, "Mate, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about." And well, she didn't, yeah, let's, she didn't yeah. listen to any music, so this mm. is the, that's the funny thing. So when you're in the car on the way to jujitsu, there's no music on. Oh, there'll probably be like seven twenty or right. just whatever radio on. Yeah, yeah love it. Love Maybe it. Maybe not even. Not even. I don't even think we really had the radio mm. on in the car. Mm. I actually found out recently that my dad doesn't listen to music in the car and that shocked me to my core. Yeah. What do you to my to? core. Nothing. News radio. Nothing. Nothing. Interesting. Isn't it? Just enjoys his own company. It's pretty amazing if you can enjoy stone silence. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's nice because you maybe tone down mm. all that sensory input that mm. you're getting. I mean, you're getting a lot mm. when you're driving. It's probably far more relaxing. You're I mean, getting you're a lot to all the time. Yeah, many breaks we can take, take, yeah. The purpose of meditation is to still mm. the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. by, by having a single point of focus, mm -hmm. gives your brain a chance just to maybe go a little bit inwards. Mm. We love that. We love a bit of that. And you should get around it. It would be, it, it would be. It You'd like to, you, you think it's, you think it's, yeah, you think it's up my alley. I, yeah. I, I, I know, I know why you, th why you would think that. It makes sense. Mm. Mm. Um, I think there's a certain element of me. But that, you haven't tried, uh, have you? <clears throat> look, I, I don't think I could honestly say that I've given it a crack. I could it's say that I've tried, out. but I don't think that's, yeah. uh, I don't think that's being honest. And get the Headspace app and do the mm. 10 for 10, which is 10 minutes, 10, mm. I guess, mm. episodes, mm. if you like, mm. for 10 minutes. Mm. 
just do that little program just to mm. give you an intro to what meditation is, just so you know mm. what it is. And then you can do, I did the 15 for 15 and the 20 for 20. Yeah, because you were hooked. They got you. Yeah, it's, yeah they got me. Well, there's, there's far more than that, but I just I use that as a bit of a gateway. Into I know, meditation. gateways. People don't really, yeah. um, people don't really like to uh, you know, give props to gateways usually. But you don't have to at any point. You, you mm. don't have to keep meditating, but you can try it and then you know what it is and you can dismiss it as saying it's not for you. <clears throat> I guess there's a few things. Number one, there's a certain element of don't really want to check under the hood. Car's fucked. Don't really want to look under the hood too much. It's not. It's not about the hood. You go deeper than the hood. I know. I know. I. I, I like the hood. The hood covers up all the shit underneath the hood. So no, but the, yeah, the shit you're worried about isn't even. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. I you know go what you're saying. Deeper. It's not. It's less physical. Less. It's restorative. I understand. Yeah. Look, it all sounds like great stuff. Um. The other thing is, I never like trying stuff that's new, because if I enjoy it, then I have to do that in perpetuity do you know what i mean like we you know if we, you we enjoy as modern it. if that's you enjoy we, it ah, you want to we do as it modern perpetuity. humans like to think that we're really time poor it's actually the opposite but it's because we can do things so quickly that makes it seem like we're time poor or there's something going on there but real in reality it's way easier than ever you can literally get food delivered to your door uh, without talking to somebody, and that was not an option when we were uh, younger. The other thing is, when we were younger, pizzas had the monopoly on being the only deliverable product after six pm. Yeah. Um, I, if you can name another food type that used to deliver, it was pizza. It was the occasional sort of maybe Chinese restaurant might deliver. There might be a yeah. little. There might be a little charge. Uh, I think could be wrong. I think that's it. So I have a question for you out of nowhere. I know we were talking about meditation stuff, but how are the pizza shops even still around? They had this monopoly. Well, they had the monopoly of being. If people are around your place, you're going to have a movie night, you're ordering pizzas, that's what you're ordering because they're the people Mm. who deliver. So they had the monopoly on deliverable items after six. All of a sudden, everybody's in that market. McDonald's are in that market now. Hungry Jacks are in that market, plus every yeah. kebab shop mm. and decent food place going. How are they still competing? Even the petrol stations are delivering. Exactly. Snacks and things. Yeah, I nearly bought a cheesecake mm. from the cheesecake shop. Yeah. I get Baskin and Robin sometimes from Oh, Baskin you pay Robins. a lot though. It's expensive, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? 30 bucks for like But you spend it because you it makes you you end up spending more money because then it makes that worth it. I remember I ordered a whole buttload of stuff and I ordered ice cream yeah. as well. The ice cream didn't show up. All I got was some fucking <sighs> service station brownie or something. It was absolutely dreadful. Um, it was an emergency. Which is I how I justified the rest of the cost. Yeah. yeah, 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 totally. Totally. Emergencies. Hey, yeah, so Olympics. Pizza's, pizza's yeah, a bit like, oh, Olympics. Pizza's a bit like uh, it's blockbuster video. Yeah. But it's... It's survived. I think mm. there's still a market mm. for pizzas. That's the problem. Mm. So Blockbuster, there was no more market for its product. Yeah, people fortunately, like people are always going to eat pizza. Yeah. And pizzas have gotten better as well. Not yeah. Pizza Hut or Domino's, I don't think. Haven't really mm. had them in a while. But I think generally better. pizza has improved. Yeah, Pizza's got better. I think pizza's Hot take. Got better. Hot take. But I think everything, because of competition, if you're not producing good food, you're, you're done. Hmm. I think there's more competition, so only the good pizza stores have survived. Well, like Domino's. Well, I don't pizza get Domino's. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know how they're surviving. That's why I just said mm. don't know how they're surviving. But most people don't even know pizza is still to. around. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it is. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've been getting around the Olympics. Look, I've I've been trying to bit. catch bits where I can, and it's not. I haven't watched enough to be honest. I watched a bit of the archery uh, with some friends. Uh, what else did I see? Um, with some friends, you all you know got together for the big for the big event. We were just all together on the uh, Discord one night and flick on the Olympics. Hey, this archery is popping off. Let's watch it. Um, yeah. It was popping off. They were they're they're amazing. Um, I was what I, I saw that the hundred meter final was today. So some of the athletics are still going on. Swimming's yeah. kind of done yeah. now. Um, athletics is kind of in full swing. Uh, they had mm-hmm. the hundred meter final today. 
And as a spectator sport, it's kind of bullshit, isn't it? It's the best. No, but I love what, the hundred meters. In, yeah, but in, imagine this, right? Everyone's really excited. Here it comes. The hundred meter finals about to start. You know, if you go take a piss, it's over, right? You can't take a piss. No one's taking during a piss. The, the toilets yeah, no, 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 are right. deserted. What I'm saying is, is that it's <laughs> over in just over ten seconds. Yeah, mate. That's why it's good. Scarcity. You're not sitting there watching a marathon, going, "Oh fuck, I need to go to the toilet." Mm. Well, no, but it's not about we're not we're not we're not structuring our sporting like whether or not we enjoy sport based off whether or not it supplies adequate toilet breaks. You know, that's not that's not important. <laughs> 10 seconds, it's done, dusted, over, see you later. I'm the best in the world. 10 seconds ago I was not, but now I am. That's um, all a human being can sustain their maximum effort for. Hmm. Maybe 200. I think 200 is still a sprint. 400, that's not 100%. It's still regarded as a sprint, but it is not a sprint. Is the 200 metres, that will be faster Per hundred meters than the hundred yeah, meters, because you only have to start once. And yeah, you can so you're still only coming off the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you'd make up that that first meter of the second hundred meters. You're way ahead of where you were at the start of the race. Okay, so so you watched the hundred. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with the characters. You know, I only pay attention to this every four years. Have you seen the documentary Sprint on Netflix? No, I haven't. Like I've only just started watching it, but um, the first episode. Basically, he's about Noah Lyles. Mm-hmm. Now, he's the guy who stole who the it today. from yeah. the Jamaican. Yeah. I saw today that they had the same time. I think it was 979. So yeah. they went down to the, the thousandth of a second. And I think he won by seven thousandths of a second or something. <laughs> something crazy like that. Yeah. It was like an inch, an inch or two. He, that's what I mean. That's why he stole it. He just leant forward. You meant to with, lean forward though, right? Yeah, just better than the other guy. He didn't run fast. He just lent better. I've played a lot of like um, Olympics video games in my time. I've I've raced in a couple of races non professionally. Um, I fame I ran the backwards hundred meters once one year at the school carnival and actually had a big stack, one yeah. of my many public stacks. But that was probably the most um, viewed. I didn't know uh, I th- they ran a backwards one hundred. They don't. Oh. No, I, I I spoke. We were in the like last heat. No one gave a shit about our race. So I was like, when the when the gun goes, I'm just going to stand up and start running backwards. And I told a few. <laughs> I told a few of the other guys in the race who were doing it. And I, was, I thought they're going to do it too. Uh, I I don't think they did. I think I just had a crack. And then I think I've tried to like pivot to like, all right, I've given up on the joke. I'm going to start running normally now. And I've tried to like change direction. I've stacked it. Um, yeah. So, but, 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 but from mm. what I know mm. about racing, as I said, I've been in some races. That yep. one experience. Experience. Yes. You're meant to like uh, throw your hands back, you know, behind your back, and put your head forward, like a you know, you're trying to get your head out there to finish first, right? Is that Boy, the they, best way? They measure it from your chest for starters, but you put your head forward, your chest is going to go forward. They do it from your chest. That's it's the, the chest. That's why you puff. You, sometimes they don't necessarily. They either dip your head or just puff your chest. Either both way. are doing a similar thing yeah. at that point. So it's not to do with head; it's to do with chest. No, if, you, if you look at the photo finish of uh-huh. that uh, Kashane Thompson uh-huh. and uh, Noah Lyles, so where's the controversy sure then? We got some well, chest. No, the, you know? no, there's no, there's no controversy actually. No controversy. He, he won at fair and square, but it was just mm. really close. I mean, they were given the mm. same time. Mm, I know. Uh, photo finish is I always going to be pretty amazing. That's why I say it's just who lent the best. I mean, when it's a photo finish, it's like you're both there at the same. You're both occupying the same sort of plane at the same time. It's just like who can kind of wiggle forward the most. Not much in it. Uh, have you watched any of the Olympics? Did you see his his walkout, Noah Lyle's walkout? No. Oh, he was jumping all over the place. He's a yeah, real okay. character. Like okay. a lot of these 100-meter sprinters are. Okay. You know, when he came yeah, out, I really he was, only know Usain Bolt, right? Like if, if people talk about sprinters, I I think of a few sprinters. I think of Usain Bolt, uh, Doris Banner, and uh, who's the other guy? Uh, what the, about the, 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 in the cool previous – Oh, okay. Sunker. 
No, Sanka was the only one who wasn't an Olympic sprinter. One of like it wasn't a, an Olympic oh. sprinting prospect. He was a go kart driver. That's why he's the brake man. Right. I love reminding you of this stuff. So, cool runnings. Doris Banner is like a surefire for the Olympics. He's Usain Bolt. He's basically Usain Bolt. And they rock up to the heat, and the young kid who whose father wants him to become an accountant or whatever, but he wants to be an Olympian, he stacks it, trips up another guy who trips up Darice, and they all get ruled out of the heat. And that's when they go, oh, we should be bobsledders and get John Candy to sort us out and help us how to bobsled. And they needed a fourth guy and sunk a coffee, who's the best pushcart driver in all Jamaica, pleads wow. with John wow. Candy's character to let him drive. I'm the best. I'm Sanka Coffee. I'm the best pushcart driver in all of Jamaica. I must drive. And he says, no, you're the brake man. He goes, no, nah, I'm not the brake man. Anyway, he says, you're the brake man. Pretty important job. Kisses eggs all the time. Gets the brakes on sometimes. I don't know. I don't know when you get the brakes on. Probably when just you put at the, the brakes end. On, you're tr- at you're trying end. to go as fast as end. possible. At the yeah. end. I could do that job. Um, or maybe just before that corner where Doris flipped the thing. Onto their heads, and yeah, if you've maybe never seen, supposed to, mm, yeah. if you've never seen the real footage of that crash, it's pretty wild. You should check it out. They don't pick up the the sled over their heads and like walk it over the line like in the movie. And there were no like Danish people or whatever like clapping in unison or anything like that. I think everyone was just in shock. Um, but the movie's way better because it's got that feel good moment. Oh mate, one of the best Disney flicks of all time. Yeah, it's fucking good. Um, I might have to look up that original footage of the crash. Yeah, we'll check it out later. I'm sure I've seen it, we'll, but we'll yeah, have I won't, a won't do it now. But. They do sort of pay homage to it in the um, movie because um, they might even show some of the actual crash footage on screens uh, or they didn't. I don't know. I don't know. But how do you go about filming that? Like, Let's go to the bobsled place. Let's get you guys in a bobsled and let's crash the fucking thing. What? You can't do that. That's dangerous. It's a movie, I don't know. Don't they do this kind of stuff all the time? I guess I don't know they why do. You're picking yeah. this one, yeah, yeah. Like I'm thinking of a car it just looked, crash it in a just, movie. It just like, looked very, you know, legit. It's not like you can fake a bobsled accident. You kind of need to go <laughs> make one. I've just been watching The Matrix. I know this was before The Matrix, but mm-hmm. you know they not by all that much. That. Yeah, they're doing another one. The Matrix. They're going to do another one. Are they? Mm. Do the are the Wachowskis involved? Wachowski? I'd say so. Wachowskis? Wachowskis, the, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The OG directors, still, yeah. What, what, um, what genders are they now? Uh, well, they're, they're ladies. They're ladies. What do you so, mean, what is it now? You knew that they changed. What do you think they were going to change back? I don't know what they started as. Oh, they were men. Yeah, okay. Transition to female. Both of them. Uh, Both of was, them. Yeah, and one of them. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't mm. yeah. No, no. I know it it would have been a new idea or something. You probably don't read that. No, no. And as you said before, my cultural references are lacking, so that's why I rely on you. I sure. know why you're surprised. I don't know how you get surprised by some of these Well, things. you said what genders are they, so you obviously knew something. Yeah, so what, yeah. So what think, genders are they now is kind of like a, well, most people, but what do you mean? Like you obviously knew something. You yeah, had to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a very leading oh, I knew, question. I knew something. I knew something. You'd be like, you'd be like, oh, and um, it's a, it's an odd second question. If I said, oh, this is my friend, uh, this is my friend Jared, and they go, oh, and um, what gender is uh, what gender is Jared now? Anyway. Doesn't matter. Yeah, if, if I knew his name was Jared, <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't. Well, it's pretty obvious. What's in it? Nothing's in a name. Nothing's in a name. Yeah. And so any other Olympics? I haven't watched much. I was going to see what you've been watching. No, I, I still haven't really um, – I know there's a bit of fallout from this sacrilegious imagery in the opening ceremony. Yeah, so they were saying that it was Greek um, Greek goddesses, a bit of a Greek pantheon, and the Christians and stuff are going, it's obviously a, a Last Supper reference. Um, and apparently the Jesus character, who would be the central figure of the the opening ceremony bit there, that the one in the middle, sort mm. of 
suggested or highly suggested that it was a sort of Last Supper homage. They could have been doing both. It could have been a bit of a hybrid. But yeah, uh, I, I think uh, it was. But who gives a shit? I don't know why everyone's. I don't. Everyone, I don't know why everyone cares. It's supposed to be disrespectful or something. But in what way? I don't know. Oh, some people. Oh, I mean, they they released an, an official apology. About Did they? It. Yep. And Elon went on X and said that he thought the performance was extremely disrespectful to Christians. Okay. So there's obviously a few people that had that sort of view. Whatever happened um, to the days of just being feeling like disrespected or whatever, and then just like getting on with your day? Like I don't know, aren't you busy, Elon? Like I've seen documentaries of Elon where he says, oh, "I sleep in the office. I sleep right here." I sleep right here. I sleep here on this couch. I work like 20 hours a day and then I sleep for a couple of hours and then I'm pinging again and I'm back to back to work. When do you find time to like get offended? How do you even have the time to make a Twitter post? Like I don't I don't write about this shit on Twitter. How do you find the time to go, mm, that really did fucking irk me, that one thing. I'm going to fucking tell some people. Who gives a shit? I don't think is he my found point. It, I don't think he found it disrespectful. Why well, he's pointing in, out that other people found it disrespectful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit he of a it was disrespectful of to other people. Yeah. I don't but know. No, man. There's, Elon's there's a got bunch, a billion yeah. kids. He's probably quite a good Christian lad. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I just don't. I just don't really care. The, you're talking about France, a, a country built on rebellion, essentially, a country built on revolution and uh, overthrowing power structures and shit. You think they're going to give the fucking churches a, a, a free pass here? Fucking own your shit. Bunch of scumbags. Everyone's been scumbags. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I thought had they said it was a, a Dionysus reference. Well, the guy was, the blue man was, who was covered the in fruits. Man, yeah, but you're, yeah. you're, you're fixated on the blue man. Forget the blue man. Get that image of like the, the Last Supper. He's not in it. He yeah, in okay. It. So, but he was like on the table, wasn't he? Yeah, but you fuck him off and then you've got a Last Supper picture. But I don't even know. If you fuck him off, that's just assuming, you know, get rid of him. But he's the one part of the conversation, like he's he's the one part of this sort of whole thing that sort of strays from the it's Christian imagery and goes more to the the sort of Greek influence. We all know the Olympics is Greek origin. So paying homage to Greek society and whatnot is not uncommon in an Olympics. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, That's what I thought as well. And it's the God of wine, which is supposed to be a strong oh, a bit of French France. wine. Yeah. Yep. A bit of French wine. Okay. And, and celebration looked like a celebration to me, but I mean, I, I can sort of see the Christian imagery, like the chick yeah, did look a bit Jesus-y. Sure. I mean, the and whole, she was that, also the, like the a panel. DJ. The panel, yeah, the panel was. Yeah. But it's just a whole bunch looked, of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and if it's like the if whole, you get a whole bunch what, of people what, standing what did, at a table, is that. What did Elon say? He what did the, the IOC was say? Extremely disrespectful to Christians. Okay, cool. All right, cool. And they deleted the or the the IOC gave an official apology and removed the video from YouTube. Okay. Can we see what the, the IOC Church, said? The Catholic Church in France criticised the segment, saying in a statement, "This ceremony has unfortunately included scenes scenes of derision and mockery of Christianity, which was mm. which we very deeply deplore." Okay. Move on. Um, what did the IOC say? You said they you said they released a statement on this. Uh, they, yeah, they hadn't. They they did an apology, but I don't know what. They but what said. It, I want to I want to read the apology. I want to know what they're sorry for because an apology they said it was is not supposed an to be a big pagan party. Yeah, what the fuck's wrong with that? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with that? Yeah, but I suppose if you have, you know, it's not very traditional. <laughs> Traditional and the Kirchies what, what, one. What's yeah. the the Olympics is a international, um, yeah. No, non- I think they feel a little bit targeted. I think they they just feel like that they were getting mocked. Okay, by the sound of things. Okay, get mocked. Deal with it. Anyway, I just had a look. Religiosity in France: forty-seven percent Catholic, two percent Protestant, thirty-three percent irreligious. So that's a very similar sort of percentage to here in Australia. Irreligious. Well, I just they said no religion here, but uh, yeah. I said irreligious. Um, same in, in Australia, though. It's no religion is thirty-eight percent. So what I, what I guess I was trying to get to there is like. Would we be sort of the kind of country we got the Olympics coming up in Brisbane, twenty thirty two? Are we the kind of country that's like uh, got that 
imbalance there where we'll sort of like pull some stunt that's going to be offensive to some Christians during our Olympic run? I don't know. I don't know. But you've got to be careful just because you want to be as inclusive as possible. Inclusion. I'm – I'm all up for inclusion. That's my big problem with this. Is it doesn't seem sensitive. like the, I don't care. It doesn't seem yeah, like yeah. the Christian church is being very inclusive if they have a problem with this Last Supper depiction for the reasons which I think they are hating on it for. I can we're talking about point. inclusion. I, I we're talking yeah, about yeah. inclusion. We're we're including you in the mockery. Hello, you're included. You don't get a yeah, free maybe, pass. Maybe, you're maybe in. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I've had a gutful. Had a gutful. There was a lot of controversy about a boxer in the Olympics because people were saying she was a man. I was there. Yeah, okay. She's not a man. Well, She's a what woman. The details, what are the details? A, a woman beat up another woman and then the woman got upset about it and said she punched me too hard. That's essentially what we're dealing with here. And then we've got a bunch well, of I mean, blind bigotry, know. blind bigotry that came afterwards, which was saying, "Oh, she's definitely a male, like fighting women. This is bullshit." You know, I thought they but didn't I mean, allow this, and they don't allow that at the Olympics. So that's not what's going on here. Yeah. So when did she transition? She didn't. She's a woman. She has been a woman her whole so life. Who, who's saying she's a man just because she's going? People. Really well? Just people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bigots. Well, that's that's a bit silly. Yeah, scumbags. Yeah. So I saw something. Yeah. I, so, I saw a so headline I guess, about that. So I just yeah. assumed that it must have been. You know, there's a lot of you know regulations and stuff now in different. Sports. But that's the problem. All People read a headline that says, she, you know, they read one headline and then they go, "Oh, did you hear at the Olympics there was a bloke beating up some chick?" And then all that's the story now, and that's what goes around. Fucking do two seconds of googling, you figure out the truth. Anyway, it's just funny. The 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 internet's gone a bit. 180 on the person who was like crying, this Italian chick going like, oh, she, you know, she fucked me up real good. That same weekend, a volleyball player in America was paralyzed by a transgendered athlete in a volleyball game. And you're not, what, you're not surprised by this? What? You're not surprised no, no, by I'm this? Wait, How does someone get paralyzed in a volleyball about? game? Yeah. Okay. So what, what, what happened? I don't know. So the headline, me. this is the problem. The headline said, transgender athlete um, paralyzes opponent in volleyball game. And you're like, you know, if you read that headline and go to work, you'll be sitting around the bloody table going, bloody hell, gee, the latest, there's a fucking, there's a fucking bloke playing in the women's league who fucking killed some chick. That's what, that's what people I think. I guess some, some people could, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, what, what, sorry, what's your point? Well, um, it's a bit of a shocking thing, right? Some people, yeah, some people How are going to no, 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 no. Some people are not. The, no, no, no. The headline. Yeah, yeah. person gets paralyzed on a volley, volleyball court. How does that happen? That's what I'm wondering. Because what I'm it wondering, sounds I'm like, it. Yeah, yeah. what it sounds like from the headline is this guy, or sorry, this transgender athlete has just gone up and snapped someone's face off and that caused them to be paralyzed for life. So there's a video. It says video. Oh, you want to click on the video? Do you want to see this poor poor girl's life like get ruined? Okay, cool. Click on the video. So there's a spike from the net and the spike goes straight down into this chick's face and she hits the deck. Um, so it's the ball hitting her in the face that's caused this paralysis of some right, kind. That's pretty unlucky. Pretty hectic, man. But I guess yeah, I mean, my point is, is the, old way, right? the, 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 my point is that the fact that they're turning it into like a a trans athlete argument instead of like what actually fucking happened, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit right, weird. right. Yeah, there are, I mean, the there, media are going to do that. It's clickbait. Yeah, and there is um, coming up pretty soon. There is an intergender uh, jujitsu fight between uh, Gabby Garcia, who you, I've talked about it before. She's a mountain woman. She's a mountain of a person, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, scary, scary, actual heavyweight, talking like legit heavyweight. Uh, and she's going to fight some dude who's also a black belt in jiu-jitsu at the tournament that's running at the exact same time as the ADCC, um, which I think I talked about before. There was a bit of controversy because they were stealing fighters from the ADCC to say, hey, like they pay you 
um, a thousand dollars to show, we pay you ten thousand to show, or whatever the the figures were. Like way better money over here. The overarching thing is that potentially this guy who's fighting Gabby Garcia, he's also running the event, is funded by some big wig. We're talking like Zuck money, that sort of thing. Zuck he, money. He tra- well, he trains with Zuck. Tra- you know, we all know Zuck does jujitsu. Mm. Mm. He trains with him and there's the notion that he put up the money for this event or someone, a bene- there is a benefactor involved. We don't know who, but they're, okay. ca- they're, they're kind of muscling the biggest jiu-jitsu t- tournament in the world. And Gabby Garcia versus this dude is going to be like the co-main event of the night. Um, and that's Are they a, sort a similar of, weight class? Not at all. I think he's oh. quite a, I think he's quite a small guy and she's, yeah, um, okay. she's a, she's a natural heavyweight. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So they're giving. So I guess she's got an advantage in that sense. Well, she's had an advantage in most of her fights because literally, like the people who they get her to fight, are always smaller than her. She's um, six foot two, ninety five kegs. Um, she's got all of the gold medals in all of the the world championships, ADCC, world championships in jiu jitsu, the Pan Championship. She's also fought in mixed martial arts. She's undefeated. Um, and but yeah, like I said, she's always sort of fighting. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. So and in so two thousand and sixteen, she, she, she fought any men in competitions. Mm, I don't think that really happens all that much. Many intergender. Yeah, I haven't heard of too many. It does happen. It happens. Um, it does happen. I can see it in jujitsu. Yeah, I, can I mean, see it, it does happen. It happens in things. punching as well. It happens in boxing. It happens in yeah. MMA. All, all that shit. Um, so in two thousand and sixteen. Um, Gabby Garcia fought, and remember I said she's 6'2". She fought five foot six, 72-kilo fighter Yumiko Hota, who's a Japanese um, professional wrestler and mixed martial artist. And this was in 2016, so this was uh, eight years ago. So she was, let me do the math, 49 at the time of the fight with Gabby Garcia. She was an old lady getting in there with a scary, big jiu-jitsu black belt. And I guess Gabby Garcia, you, you know, she's just scary. Um, it, it's quite scary. Okay. All right, I'm trying to find uh, when uh, when this event is. Can't find out uh, where it is. Oh, Craig Jones is the guy who's holding the invitational event. And so that you know, oh, he's 213 pounds, six foot. So he's... He's big. I, I, I misjudge that. I misjudge yeah. that. They're quite a similar size. Yeah. And they're going to jujitsu off against each other or, yeah. Yeah, okay. So how's a jujitsu fight go? Do you have rounds? Is it five-minute rounds or something? <sighs> okay. Or do you just um, get at it and then it just ends at some point? Yeah, no, there'll be rounds and things like that, surely. I mean, you're asking me how jujitsu tournaments work. Wouldn't you know some of this shit? Oh, well, Japanese jiu-jitsu is completely different to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. There's no competition True. in Japanese jiu-jitsu. Well, I remember I, I was talking to your dad once about jiu-jitsu and your dad sort of like, you know, pretty snily said to me, mate, there's Brazilian jiu-jitsu and then there's jiu-jitsu kind of thing. It's not Japanese jiu-jitsu. It's jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, maybe. Is, it, is that, um, is that, this, is that this, right? Or, the origins of this, so J- Japanese jiu-jitsu, it, its origins as far as I know is um, it's it's when you're disarmed from your um, – it's, it's basically, it basically self-defense against an armed person with a sword is a lot of – I think that's Aikido as well. I think – do they both have swords in Aikido? Yeah, it's there's unarmed, a key to but basically stuff. Because you, you do defense to weapons as well. So it's yep. basically the other person may or may not have a weapon. You yep. don't have anything. You're unarmed. Yep. Yep. How do you even the match through technique and training and stuff? Yeah, it, it's not – you don't train striking. It's body movement, moving off the line of the attack and trying mm-hmm. to use their force against them. So in that sense, it's sort of jiu But what it is, that self-defense thing is an admission that the man with the sword or the knife is in the dominant position right now. It's an it's a, yeah. it's an acknowledgement that hey you need training and you need to get techniques that will work against someone who has the edge on you literally. Totally, and it's only counter. You don't mm. you don't lay you don't strike first. You're reacting to their strike. Mm. Yeah, we should watch some Steven Seagal Aikido shit later as well. Yes, um, yes, we should. He, he's the you know the goat. Is he? 
what the goat of having people run at him and then flip him over yeah, onto their heads. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Do you remember when he tried to claim that he taught Anderson Silva the front kick that he knocked out um, Vitor Belfort with? He's like, yeah, I taught him that kick. Shut up, Stephen. Anyway. I didn't know he was claiming that. I think we did watch some good Steven Seagal summaries of movies. I think that was a while back. Um, they're always good fun because his movies are fucking hilarious. I think his most recent contract is he doesn't stand up. So he does a lot of scenes where he's just like shooting people, but he's just sitting down, just not doing anything. It's it's good money if you can if you can make it that way. Oh, hey. It's unbelievable. More sport. Again, Eagles had a win on the weekend. Massive. They did. They did. Jared Schofield's first win as coach. Yes. Yes. That um, was pretty pretty impressive. The boys all got excited. I think after the game there was a big selfie that Harley Reid took of the team. And I think Will Schofield was on the commentary team at the time and he said something like, Warsford would have leveled us if we did that. He would have fucking decked us all and sent us to the twos for doing that. How get, things change. Get, yeah. mm, I think they're just happy. Get around it. Like you can't you can't get upset at happiness, can you? I don't think so. Don't know if they can. Lost ten straight. A lot of those guys probably haven't even played in a win. Yeah, yeah, it's rough. First um, win for the new coach. Duggan kicked a goal, unlike him. Yeah, Cripps had a good late goal as well. Yeah, yeah, very to good. Seal Check it. side, yeah. bit of a sealer. Yeah, steadied. Uh, got it done. The boys had a win. What a what a crazy thing! It's um, actually the best ending to a year. This the ladder at the moment is out of control. Oh my god! What the fuck happened to Sydney on the weekend? Yeah. What happened? They didn't score I anything I don't until know. I don't what? know what's going on. Port Adelaide put like seventy one points on the board, and then they, they hadn't scored yet. Um, the other thing is that, that happened what happened is I know they got done by one hundred and ten odd points. So they Port Adelaide had seventy on the board before Sydney scored. I believe so in the second quarter. And I think they ended up putting 150 on the or 140 points up. Uh, Port Adelaide did against uh, Sydney's what 50 or something. Sydney have lost four of the last five. Yeah, they're getting exposed a bit, but they're still in a good position. Obviously, you can't be you can't be upset with top of Man, the ladder. Losing by 110 points is it's not good. Exposed. It's not good. It's not good. But but Frio lost to um, the Eagles in a derby earlier in the year. Got absolutely. Pumped by them, and they're premiership contenders right now. Yeah, and the they Eagles had an beat them. Loss as well. By a Very lot. awkward loss. Very awkward. Yeah. Um, that so, was I mean, that anyone, went down to the wire. Anyone, man, Carlton. They're talking. Carlton. I thought might finish top of the ladder. They Bulldogs. might not make finals. Talking about Bulldogs. Yeah, but talking about Bulldogs. What flag? Get a flag. <laughs> Grab they're a flag. playing well at the moment. They're definitely. I thought and Hawthorne. I, I would like them. Essendon to make is still kicking around. Yeah, Collingwood is still just in the mix. Yeah, that's what else I was going to bring up. It was Pendlebury's 400th game on the weekend. That's and, just um, crazy. Yeah. And um, a good friend of mine, good friend of the shows, um, Ben Henry, got to perform his Scott Pendlebury song on guitar at the G in front so of epic. how many thousand people? I have no idea. Um, which would have been epic for him. Um, oh, and, so and, good. And there was a... When he told me, because he, he told me that um, he got to go into the rooms when they played against Frio, this was maybe eight weeks ago, six weeks ago, somewhere like that, he actually got the opportunity to go into the rooms and sing the song uh, to Pendles. And I just thought, who the fuck gets this opportunity to make a silly song but then also get to perform it in front of, you know, arguably his idol. He's a, he's a mad Collingwood supporter. Pendlebury's been a stalwart of the team for the last, I don't know, 10 years or more. Um, most of his life. <laughs> not, not quite. He was drafted in 2005. Yeah. So a lot of his life has been spent. What, 2005? He was drafted in 2005, yeah. By Collingwood? Yeah. Well, you don't make 400 games unless you play for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess um, it would have just been nice for him to do that for that and to have it well received by the guys as well. Most people don't like it when you sing happy birthday to them. If you said happy birthday to song. you, happy birthday to you, people hate it. They're they don't not like happy getting birthday, sung yeah, to. Uh, what's his name? Do you say his name is Ben? Ben, yeah, Ben yeah, Henry. That, yeah. That's an epic song he did. It's, yeah, it's, so it's to the tune of Let It Be. It's a Beatles track. Yeah. We're still on the Beatles thing. Um and uh, beautiful. Uh, he sang it really well. Um, and what I, I guess what my point I was going to make is that Pendles looked like he was enjoying it, which is better than having that guy who uh, – it's, it's a bit awkward. A guy's going to sing a song about you. Look, 
it is a bit awkward just, you know. It's it's, it's nice to see him get excited about it and not get upset about it. He's got and a I nice voice. In the original version of the song, he actually mentions that in the off-season, Scotty also runs a winery. What a diverse uh, skill set, Pendle Bree. Um, and then he says, uh, although I'd like to try a drop, your cheapest red is 150. I'm not made of money, Pendle Bree. And he actually sort of said, um, but he gave me one for free or something. He rhymes it with that. So that's nice. He signed a bottle of wine. You know, if, again, we're talking about the, it's not just some guy. It's not just an AFL player. It's like his team. He loves these guys. So and Pendlebury's probably going to go down as the, I think he is the greatest magpie of all time. Really? You're going with it? Yeah. Apparently that's word on the street is. But, I mean, he's yeah, fresh you're off a, 400 You're games. just a Buckley hater. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if we should be celebrating a man who once had dreadlocks and he once bounced a ball on a pigeon. Have you seen that? So what you're Pendlebury saying is, is running animal along. cruelty and bad haircut. Bad hairdos. Although I actually really like dreadlocks, but I'm not sure if I was a huge fan of his dreadlocks. But but didn't I he have tips at one sweet. point? Yeah, I had tips at one point. Mm, see, you can't really. That's how bad it is. Yeah, yeah, you can't really. You know, you can't do that. I mean, that's that's the sort of thing that I always say to my dad. I was like, yeah, but you had a mad mullet, dude. You had a mad mullet. Come on, man. Like, because he'll give me shit for my hair. I'll just be like, bro, you had a mullet. Don't talk to yeah. me. Pendlebury was running along and just bounced a ball right on a pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Rude. Insensitive. Wow. wow. Duty of care. He should have been looking out for the bird's uh, well-being. I mean, a I seagull we can maybe, but a, a beautiful pigeon. Yeah. Fuck him. But yeah, you don't get too many more consistent performers than Pendlebury. Mm. And he's got this trick he does where he either – Mm. moves around and everyone mm. else stays still mm. or he stays still mm. and everyone else moves around. Ah, so he just has to make the call of whether or not he's going to move or stay still mm. and everything Rel- sort of happens around Relative to the him. other people around yeah. him. Yeah, it's very weird. It's very bizarre how he can do that. What's his credentials like? Like, uh, you know, when we talk about people in sort of hindsight and in past tense, we always will scroll to the career highlights tab of the Wikipedia and that'll give us a general vibe of of, of what they've done. But these are just numbers at the let end of the day. You, just let numbers. me give you a couple of stats. I know, I know what he's done because I was looking him up. Two premierships. He's got a Norm Smith. He's got the most possessions of any AFL player of all time. Okay. Over, over 10,000. That's a good one. Five best and fairest. Okay. Six all Australians, one dead pigeon. One dead pigeon. And I don't think we should let it slide, personally. He There's a few more money. things. He did. He was the captain for eight years. So eight-year captaincy stint. Hasn't been the captain for the last two years. Who have they got to take over? Mm, oh, it's um, Darcy Moore. Ah, okay. That mongoloid. Okay. Gone with that. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure Pendlebury, they said that he's he's had 18 seasons. He didn't play it all in his first season. 18 seasons and 15 top three in the best and fairest mm. at the club. That is consistency. Yeah, okay. And I think that is sort of his moniker, right? That is his claim to fame is that he's consistent, right? And he's not the fastest guy out there. He's like a James Hurd. Mm. I don't think he would be upset me saying he's not the fastest dude out there. Mm. He's no Petrocelli. Petrocelli's fast, is he? He's, he's super fast. Mm, okay. Um, so he's just got little legs, yeah. Um, he's 36 years old. Is that old? Are we talking about an old man now? Is that fair? He'd be in the top 10 for oldest players in the AFL. Yeah. And does that, you know, just like um, how we're talking about LeBron, how – still looks like he's at the top of the game, could probably go a few more years. Is AFL just a different game? Is this just not how we do I things over here? it's a totally different game. It's, yeah, I but we it's... probably would have said the same thing about eSports and then Faker just broke the wheel again and won again mm. as an old man. So yeah. 
what do we know really? There would have been a point in time mm. where 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 experience sort of played more of a role than sort of your natural talent or whatever or your or your your gifts, so to speak. Um, because that's clearly what was going on in the nineties. All these pricks looked about sixty years old who were out there as player coaches. Yeah. Um, they probably just old were spots. sixty year old dudes. Yeah. yeah. I always think it's because they grew up tough, but I'm beginning to think that they just ran old blokes out there. Well, Pendlebury, Pendlebury's definitely got the experience. They call him the conductor. What does that mean? He's oh, like an on-field in... coach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, when I went to the West Australian Charity Orchestra the other week, I was looking at the conductor. What are they doing? I've had this problem before, man. What are they doing? I could because oh, Even I'm most drum- conductors, if you – yeah, go on. So, so I'm a drummer with some kind of sense of timing. Not good, but like I've got yes. a sense of it. I'm, yes. I'm looking at him. Yes. It, it, he's not like on the beat. You know, he's moving his hands up and down and sideways. He's not even on the beat. He's kind he's of not. like he's not. in between the beats. He's doing, he or she, the conductor, is doing multiple things with their hands, right? I'm led to believe that there's some complex art going on, but at the end of the day, they know, I know, and I've heard them say it's showmanship. It's pageantry. It's kind of horseshit. If you were in the band actually doing work, which is what most of the grunts are doing, they're doing they're, – they're, they're making the music. You're just the one cashing the check. They're getting the biggest check. The conductor gets the biggest check, right? Have they got the hardest job? I say no, unless they're also a composer. I give them a free pass if they compose the music, but if they're just like, "All right, guys, Mozart's fifth again," and fucking go, um, I, I yeah, disagree I for two reasons. Mm. One of them is I've heard from musicians. I don't know if this is just a, a big hoax they're playing on me, uh-huh, but could they be. say the musicians themselves say that the what do you call them again? The conductor, conductors, is critical, critical. absolutely critical. Mm. I don't understand that. I don't know exactly what they're getting, what they're on about. Because I don't know if they they mean that he's critical or he or she's critical on the night of the performance or the whole in the lead, lead up. up. Sure. Where they, apparently they have the best ear, so they're a bit like a Rick Rubin. Mm. They've got an amazing ear. They're like, mate, the fourth, so they're massive wankers. The fourth uh, violin, <laughs> your your E strings flat. You know, like they'll pick oh, up when everything's on. like everything's the fourth going violinist on. doesn't know that their E strings flat. No, come but on, they have man. a better ear. It's Rick oh, Rubin, man. Please. Oh, please. So this is how it started. I, I've just read the Wikipedia page. It says that it is the art of directing musical performance, such as an orchestra or choral co- co- uh, concert. It has been deci- defined as the art of directing the simultaneous performance of several players or singers by the use of a gesture. Now, that's just pointing, isn't it? That's just pointing, isn't it? Okay, maybe. So that's how conducting would have started. It just would have been like pointing and pointing and pointing. But once everyone's got the tunes down and you've done it ten or twelve times, you don't need to be pointed at anymore, do you? But apparently, yes, they're very, very uh, relied upon. I think the conductor's just an uh, emotional Labrador, but the composer, who's actually composing the music. Mm-hmm. What you're witnessing when you listen to one of these orchestra sets is the composer's descent into madness. Mm. Go on. They're insane. These guys are insane. They're geniuses. But you're you're seeing their insanity start to just spill onto the page. They don't repeat any they don't repeat anything in an orchestral performance. It's all it's all moving parts. You know, they're not there's no choruses and verses and bridges. It doesn't work like that. It's like, you know, the feeling goes up for a while, it comes down for a while. What you know, were you at the hit- con- what, what were you looking at? What were you what performance were you watching? Uh it was The Planets. Oh, that's by, right. Yes. Yes, uh, you mentioned that. Yeah, some guy who composed that in uh during World War One. And they're all based on planets, all the songs. Yeah, yeah there's cool. there's one that's based on it's not in order of the planets. I think it goes it's called the first one's called Mars, like bringer of war or something, and then it's Venus, something about peace. Then it's Mercury, the angel with wings, or something like this. This is the gist of it, mm. and then it goes to the big boys. You got Jupiter, mm. Mm. Saturn, Uranus, mm. and Neptune. Okay, 
And so it's supposed to be themed somehow, but it's just music at the end of the day. Like how do you write a song about Neptune? Um, well, they you barely can, you knew can, it existed. You can, you can feel. You can feel it. You can imagine think, what it feels like. I don't. We hadn't even got a probe anywhere near that. We didn't launch Voyager till 1970. You don't need to know what it to looks past. like, though. You don't need to know what it looks like. To get the vibe of it. It's just, well, first of all, if you've never seen it before, you think we don't know anything about it, but I, I, I disagree. I know plenty from not being able to see it. It's enigmatic. It's uh, dark. It's mysterious. There's all sorts of words that, that come to mind when you say we've never laid eyes on it before. I think of all sorts of stuff. It brings feelings. Having some feelings. So I'm just having a quick look just to make sure – because I, I wanted to know what we knew about Neptune in 1915. It probably mm-hmm. wasn't very much. We didn't. I don't think we discovered Pluto at that stage. That's why Pluto didn't. Well, make we've the discovered cut. it, and then we've undiscovered it. Go and fuck yeah. off. Yeah, get we in, discovered get it out. as a planet. Then we thought, no, fuck off. You're it's not just a, a planet, rock. Mate. See you later. Yeah, okay, this is interesting. So, though. This is interesting. Yeah, hear me, hear me, Mercury yeah. is the first planet from the sun. We know that, right? Confirmed. Why is it called Mercury? Is it a Greek god? Yeah. Well, it's a Roman god. Roman gods, of course, of course, sorry. Same what, sort of thing. That? It's, is, it well, he's, fast, is it the fastest one? No, so Nine. ancient Roman god uh, Mercurius, 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 which is god of commerce and communication and the messenger of the gods. Now, why is that important? Why, what about, what about, why, why would this planet be the personification of the messenger of the gods. Because it's the fastest? No. No, it's between us and the sun. It's all it's all solar worship. It's all sun worship stuff. Here, what, what they're saying Venus, is... Venus is also between us and the sun. But I suppose there yeah. can only be one messenger. He's the messenger. Yeah. He's little. Yeah. Venus is doing other stuff. Venus has got other jobs. But that's what I see it as. It's, it's, it's just a massive sun cult. Um, that's how you name it anyway. When I was at that charity orchestra performance, in the interlude, they had the the charity raffle drawn, right? Didn't win okay. it. But they were talking about like the MC was then he talked about the planets for a little bit and then he talked about the upcoming Act 2 because Act 1 was the planets and Act 2 was um, a thing called Planet Earth because Planet Earth got left off the planets by, by the composer. And so mm. some later composer, a recent one, I don't mm. know, the last some Australian one or something. And actually, it was about twenty years ago. I think created a three part Earth three, one, three parts on Cold Planet Earth. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, this band that performed at the WA Wind Symphony Orchestra, they said it's the first time that this has been performed in Australia, and they were pretty chuffed about it. They thought that was a pretty big deal. Wow, huge deal. Wow. But what is a big? That I didn't think that was a big deal. It's not a big deal. What <laughs> is a big deal? <laughs> is the WA Wind Symphony Orchestra competed in some orchestra band comp. Oh, fuck yeah. It's been going for 80 years in Australia. And it's the first WA band to ever win it. Wow. So that was pretty cool. Because <laughs> then you know you're seeing it because I don't know what a good or bad orchestra is. Well, no. Most of the time when that once, you're in, once you're in an orchestra – Situation, you're going to go watch an orchestra. You're not going to really spot a mistake, are you? Not, not only that, but like we would go to a music event and go, that was flawless. And every single one of those people in the orchestra would go, oh, I missed this note or I fucked this up or I did this and whatever. And it used to happen all the time with um, the bands that we used to go see in our early 20s and stuff who we had friends in the band. They'd come off and we'd be like, man, that was amazing. That sounded so good. Couldn't understand any of the lyrics, but it sounded so good. And the, he was like, man, I fucked this up. I fucked this up. This was shit. This was shit. I'm like, man, all right. We, well, well, I can let you know that the every punter back here, everyone in the crowd thought it was great. So mm. fuck your negative speak. But that's essentially like what we're good at. We can do that pretty well. We're, yep. we're our the own worst is, critics. Is, yes, yes. And they know what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. We don't. So we just we hear don't. whatever we hear and we're just like, great. It's fantastic. Great. 
So good. Yeah, sorry, the MC was telling me something and I took mental note of it. They were talking about this new type of art and it's a fish and you cover it in paint and cotton and then you somehow get some life-size impression of it. I don't know if it's a live fish or a dead fish because I couldn't ask any questions. Mm-hmm. But it would be pretty – I was imagining you get a big fish, dip it in okay. paint, okay, roll it on cotton – and then unleash it onto a canvas? I don't that know. That sounds like animal cruelty again. Again? Well, you're you're going to have this, well, yeah, we were talking about something earlier that was a oh, kid pigeon, animal cruelty. The pigeon, yeah. The, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't drown a fish in open air to paint for you. You can't, we can't, who's doing this? Can't be doing that. So are they killing the fish first? Hopefully. Well, you're saying I thought that I thought it was the flailing of it around that's doing the painting. I don't know. That's what it sounded like to me. That sounds pretty grim, really. You're getting what you're getting there is the sort of death thralls of a fish going through its hardest time and quite literally the end of its life, and you're using it as a means to create art. That's art, man. That's terrifying. And one day the fish will look at you judging art. I'm judging everything today. Um, no, but I can have feelings on that. I have feelings on that. Yeah, have um, feelings, have feelings. I uh, don't love that. But see, when I was a young child, we, you know, I was at Hillary's Boat Harbour, caught a blowy on the end of my fishing line. Caught a blowy on the end of your line, yeah. A blowfish and famously not very good eating. In fact, I think people tell you they're poisonous. Um, maybe they are. Um, <gasps> Fugu. So we used to think, well, because we can't eat them, and they seem to be a bit of a pest in the fishing world. We'll just deal out our own sweet justice on these idiots if we catch them. Because like you catch them, you don't want to catch them. You want to catch like a herring or something or, I don't know, a little little fish. But you end up catching one of these. And so what we would do is Maybe a King George Whiting. swing them. They're still on the hook. Swing them into the rocks because they puffed up and they went bang against the rocks. And then you sort of torture them for a little bit before you yeah. either let them go or kill them. Yeah, um, put, them on the, and, and, put them on the hot rocks. Yeah. But I've come to hate that moment that happened yeah. in my yeah. mind. And I think you've had similar revelations with um, maybe the burning of an ant or two with a magnifying glass. We don't feel good about it anymore and we shouldn't. Um, that's called growth. And that's why I think this fish <laughs> wrapped in paint or whatever, I, I think I'm understanding what you're saying, sounds pretty grim. Yeah. How did we start talking about this? It was in between the two acts of the oh. uh, orchestral oh. performance. And I'm telling you what I heard, and that's what I oh. thought was crazy. I was like, what is going on here? Oh. I assume the fish was dead, but it wasn't clear to me. They made it sound like the fish was flopping around doing the art. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Grim as hell. Did you buy So you didn't get it? I, I don't know what they were talking about. They just did the art it look good passing. because I'd be no, a real I shame. See, I couldn't see the art or anything. Well, oh, it'd be a didn't... real shame if that art sucks because, like, literally, this fish had to give his life for it. Yeah, and I've clearly got the situation wrong. But I remember at the time being like, "What? Are they, what is going on? Have these artists gone mad?" Well, the short answer is yes. If I watched a was, I watched yeah. a Bob Ross highlight today. You know, Bob Ross, the painter. And it was literally the week after or like the first show he did after his wife died. And he's just stoically painting away. He's like, I'm mixing up some of this paint here Um, because you got to have darkness. You got to have darkness so that you know when you're in the light. And it's just this, this guy, he's just being so cool about it all. And you're just like, aren't you really cut up right now? How are you? How are you providing joy still? How did you anyway, know his wife had died? Because uh, it was posted on the, – the post says – the post says um, this was the first episode after Bob Ross's wife had died. Yeah, okay. We'll have to take pretty their hectic. word for it because that is pretty hectic. Yeah. That is it, sad. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and Bob Ross died quite young, right? Did he? I think he died of cancer. Oh, he probably did. Well, he's he like 50 years chain old. Chain smoker or something. What was his deal? Oh, I can get anyone. True, but if he was young, um, 95, okay, so he was uh, 52 when he died um, and his one of his wives died in 1992. That would be the one that he's talking about there, Jane Ross. 
Um, yeah, so there's just See, um, entire warehouses full of uh, Bob Ross paintings. What I get sad about, yeah, that's right, that's right, is, yeah, he died at 52. His wife died presumably earlier than that mm. and younger. Yeah, yeah well, a few um, years. Yeah, let's say, say, let's say she was 50. Let's just, they both miss out on their super. Mm. She I actually that's one 50. of the real. She was born that's in one 1977. Them. She was about thirty years younger than him. Oh, see, that's oh, no, that's, that's, that's when they got no. Tragedy. That's when no. That's when they got married. I apologize. I take that back. I will not speak ill of the dead. Um, yes, it's a tragedy no matter what. But I mean, the the extra tragedy is they didn't get their super, which they probably didn't even have super. Who knows? So, I mean, so he was. <laughs> you know, who knows when super came in. But like that's my biggest fear. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Uh, you, I'm f- I, people I fear who that I'm going people to die who are excited I'm about to my super. People who are excited about their super aren't doing very well, are they? Like, uh, you know, like even even that being like the end of the the bow, the rainbow retirement. What happens then? I know. I know. What happens people, then? So many people talk so positively about retirement. I find it quite bizarre. I know what they're getting at. Oh, no, retirement would be great right now. Right now would be great. I've talked about this before. We need to reverse the working cycle. Do all your um, work after, you know, in your 30s and onwards, but the 20s to the 30s, that shouldn't be, you know, knuckle down. That should be figure shit out. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But society wants those productive years. They want to bleed you dry of all that energy. Mm. And product. They don't want, you don't want that dementia field, like, you know, frail person working a nine till five when they're 90. No, you're right. I found, a little bit, I found out a little fact the other day that um, Google Images was created after there was mass demand for finding Jennifer Lopez wearing a green dress at the 2000 Grammys. Mm. Is, it a, is it a good picture? You know what's funny? I'd seen it before. Mm. Well, of course I you don't have. know how. It's the reason Google how. Image exists. Well, it's yeah, but big I, I, enough. I never Googled it. Like, yeah, but if it was big enough to create one of the biggest things in the world, then you probably saw it. That's, you know, pretty standard. But I think where I recognised it from is mm. Trey Parker of South Park fame wore a similar green dress. Yeah, to the Oscars. He was doing his best. Yes, yes. He was doing his best. Oh, the Grammys or whatever. Doing his best Jennifer Lopez. It was the Oscars. Um, It was the Oscars. He was nominated for best song. But that was the Oscars. I don't know. What's the difference between the Oscars and the Grammys? Uh, Grammys is for music. Oscars is for movies. Grammys is just Jay-Z and Beyonce and Lady Gaga. And Oscars is your yeah, Scorsese's, Spielberg's. <laughs> oh, it says here uh, the Academy Awards, the two. Th- yeah, which is the Oscars. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I don't. I have no idea. I don't. Yeah, the Academy Awards is the Oscars. Man, smashing a bit of acid before that—that that is intense. Well, that's what he did. Um, I think he was doing hands logic. You know, super hands logic, which is like, I think he tells Mark before he witnesses the birth of his child to trip because it would be amazing. I mean, he's like, isn't it already amazing, like witnessing the birth of your child? And he's like, yeah, but if you're tripping, you'd be like, whoa. So he, they've obviously signed up to that sort of method of thinking and gone, the Oscars will be good. But I think they figured out pretty early that it was a, a pretty bad idea. I don't even think they liked the idea to begin with. When someone says, man, you should drop acid and go to the Oscars, I think they said, nah, dude, I'm not doing that. And I don't know why they did in the end, but they said they were going to wear dresses and not talk about them. That was their rule. People are going to ask about the dress. Don't acknowledge the dress. Hmm. So people would come Move up to on. them and be like, oh, my God, yeah. like, what are you guys wearing tonight? And Matt Stone would just be like, such a magical evening. It's just so nice to be here. Oh, my God, all the stars are out. It's beautiful. Oh, my God, this is great, um, which is hilarious because they were tripping. And, um, yeah, they don't have many friends left in Hollywood because I think uh, people there were thinking uh, that they were ruining their big night. Like, you guys are ruining my big night. And he's like, fuck off. You know, like, this is Hollywood. Like, let's get let's get nuts kind of thing. That was his kind of point at the time. Like your big night. Ooh. Yeah. How would they be ruining someone else's night? Yeah. 
Um, oh, because they're, they're not themselves. because they're not giving it the sort of um, oh the respect the respect that it deserves. Mm. And if they win, then it's like they don't respect them if they're the winners. You know what I'm saying? So look, uh, anyway, fuck that. In some ways, that's a you don't want to be known as the, the person uh, who got offended. Who cares? Just fucking yeah. Just keep living. <laughs> hmm. um, okay, then, so they they were at the Oscars, and then he says that while they were in the Oscars, then they were starting to deal with the realization that they're coming down off the acid, and that they have to watch like three hours of speeches, and so they 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 hated it after that. I think the initial moment would have been quite funky, but I think they yeah. would have hated it after that. <laughs> and you'd want to get the timing right as well. I mean, it's a big window. It's a big window. Um, I don't, you I don't think you do want to be, timing, right? don't, don't you want to be kind of tripping when you turn up at the event? Or maybe you take 100%. it as soon as you, yeah, nah, well, Maybe nah, a good nah, way nah, to do nah, it is nah, get nah. through the red nah, carpet nah, without nah, it. You want to then, arrive. Yeah. Nah, you want to yeah. arrive. Because he even talks around? about that. Matt Stone yeah. says that. He says anyone who's tripped before will tell you that transitioning from a space to another space is quite weird if you're um, – if you're experiencing some sort of psychedelic. So he said that transitioning from the inside the limo to the red carpet was a real big moment in the, in the evening. If you like, um, they had to step out and then all of a sudden, boom, they're wearing dresses on the red carpet. Like they weren't, they weren't going to take acid and then be like, try and sneak in, try and sneak in, no, try and sneak in as in like, wear a suit, wear a suit, just look normal sit down in your chair, shut the fuck up, don't say anything, all that sort of stuff. Now they rocked up in dresses. Like they were, I don't know why, but they were putting the spotlight on themselves and saying, we're fucking with your shit, which is hilarious. They even thought about doing dinosaur costumes, but they said that they didn't want anything that they could say, no, you can't come in. You had to be wearing stuff that other people are wearing, which is dresses and shit like that. So Mm. they went with it. Good on them. Jennifer Lopez's broke the internet dress. Yeah. Yeah. And what's funny is um they one of the interviewers on the red carpet says something to um Trey Parker and Matt Stone. They say like, so you guys are nominated for best song? And then uh Trey goes Matt goes and leans over and goes, Well, I'm not. And Trey goes, Matt's not. I am. <laughs> kind of thing. I'm not. So he just brought him as a date, and that's nice. They're a good duo. It's a really good documentary, that Seven Days to Air thing, because it's the story of them getting an episode from nothing, which is the writer's room and people freaking out on a Monday, to a finished product past the censors by Sunday. They have to come up with – people are like wondering back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s, how is South Park so current, so up to date? Well, the reason it was up to date is because they just wrote that shit. Last week, they sign up for the season. They go, we're going to do 20 episodes this season. See you guys in the office on Monday. We're pretty much going to be doing this every week until we pump the the season out and then you can have six months off. I think that's the jam. That's unbelievable, isn't it's it? It's crazy. They, they, they release it on the Sunday night and they're literally back to the drawing board Monday morning. We're talking like the tape gets delivered to the studio and they put it in, you know, and it goes. Um, I love that scene where the lawyer is on the phone to the censors going, no, 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 she's not going to be shitting into the mouth. She's going to be sh- – you won't see the shit go – okay, yeah, so they're explaining to the censors because the censors have to approve it all before it gets yeah. shown on the screen. And they're always – it's it, it's amazing that the show is so cutthroat and brutal and always teetering the line of acceptable – of what's acceptable to show on television, they're always on that line and they've got to get it done in six days and get it past the censors. And get it past, yeah. But I think sometimes the men. censors will say, yeah, you can do that if you don't show this and they go, great. So they, they, they now they know they go back to them and be like, hey, you have to cut, you have to like not sh- physically show that or, you know. Yeah, and that they, they would have some tough chats with Trey because they'd go back and they'd say they, they're not happy with this bit and this bit. They want you to change this. And he'd go, we did this, this, this last time. Tell them that we're doing the yeah. same thing as that. Yeah. Get yeah. back on the phone with them. Fucking sort them out. I don't have time for this. I've got I've got two days. i got two days to finish this shit. They would Amazing. have a lot of precedent, wouldn't they? Oh, they would be so like, much. hey, we, you we, let you this know, through. We, we did the human caterpillar thing. That was the episode. 
funnily yeah, enough. Yeah. Seven Days to Air is them making the human Sentai Pad episode, which is Sentai Pad, that's right. Which is so intense as a concept. I mean, the human centipede is already a fucked up idea for a movie, but they do they they just went and doubled down on it and took it for a run. Great fun. Love that episode. Love that <laughs> that special Seven Days to Air. So oh, good. And isn't the front guy on the human centipede? It's the Japanese store owner, isn't it? Uh, isn't that yeah, the first one? I think yeah. so. Oh my god! Yeah, because he offers to Kyle, who's in the middle. He says, um, "Do you want me to eat the asparagus or the um, crab or something? I'll give you the choice of what what I can eat." And he's like, "Asparagus, asparagus." He goes, "Very well, I will eat the crab." <laughs> oh, the cuttlefish! Cuttlefish. cuttlefish that's it. Cuttlefish. I will eat the cuttlefish. Yeah. Ugh. But they're it's still a genius, going, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're still going. Can you watch them Somehow. in Australia yet? Because for a while, yeah, you could use a VPN. But it was sad that someone owned the rights to South Park in Australia. And although they're releasing them for free everywhere else, they've made enough money. They don't want to oh, They don't need okay. to sort of monetize it anymore. Um, you still couldn't get it in Australia. If it's for free, wouldn't it be on their website or Comedy Central it's or something? Blocked. It's blocked by whoever has the rights in mm. Australia, in the Australian oh, jurisdiction. Come on, let us have it. Um, I want to watch 20 seasons of South Park. I probably, I've probably seen about, I don't know, I want to say like half of it that's out there, maybe half yeah. of it, yeah. even less for The Simpsons. Are they still going with The Simpsons? Yeah, still going with The yeah, Simpsons, but, I bro. mean, you don't, you don't need... Like you, you want it, You only need the stuff with the previous writers. But the right? Simpsons is flagging, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people talk about the golden era of the Simpsons, right? But have a listen to this. I only just saw this the other day. I was on the Wikipedia page for the Simpsons, and I was down at the viewing numbers, which were these would be American viewing figures. But have a listen to this. Season one, 1989, 33 million uh, viewers watched the most watched episode, which was one of the episodes of the season, 33 and a half million season one. Okay. 33.6 season two. Okay. So it's pretty rare to go up, but they did go up by 0.1, 25.5. I'm just going to go through the years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 25.5 becomes 28.6 becomes 24 becomes 22. And then now we're in 1995, 22 million with the episode who shot Mr. Burns an absolute fucking classic 22 million, right? That's right now. Wheelhouse. This is when we were watching the Simpsons. Okay, if I scroll down, Mm. 2006, 11 million. So we've lost half the viewership in 10 years. Okay, keep going. 2012, 9 million. 2018, 8 million. 2022, 4 million. It's it's dying a very slow death. Most shows, right, even really popular ones, Things like Game of Thrones and stuff. Maybe Game of Thrones isn't the example I should use, but a lot of shows, their season one figures are really good and their season two figures are often uh, 20 to 30% below that. But the, but the show still goes on because that's enough for them to keep going. Mm. So w- I wonder what the Simpsons sort of lower threshold is, what they're willing to accept before they just go, dude, we're paying these guys, we're paying Nancy Cartwright to be the voice of Bart must be millions of dollars to make The Simpsons nowadays. It's not as cheap as it was in 89 when they were getting 10 times the viewership. Now you've got a show it has got 10 times less the viewership but 100 times more the cost. Yeah. All these guys are making good money. All of the main characters are making shitloads of money. So, yeah, they typically don't get cheaper, do they? No, Game of Thrones at the, the end. By the end of you it, have to it, start paying all the actors. Show. Like yeah. they're all stars they give them now. producer credits. People, you know, if you're in a show like The Sopranos, by the end of it, you're you're getting a producer credit. You know, oh, it's sad because The Simpsons is a huge part of my childhood, uh, and I guess by extension, life. Um, love all that. What about new Curb Your Enthusiasm? Mm. So I'm probably about three seasons behind on Curb, maybe two or three seasons behind on Curb, but this is the final season. Larry's kind of said it. Yeah, Yeah, Larry said it. 
And do you reckon those more recent seasons you've worked, watched are worth it? Because I'm thinking about getting on board. I probably mm. haven't. I've se- probably mm. only seen up until like season. I'm going to guess ten. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, this doesn't strike me. Curb doesn't strike me as a show that's being cancelled. Okay, this strikes me as a show that Larry's kind of had a gut full of, and he's kind of wants to move on, I guess, or retire. Yeah, yeah. Um, would love to know the viewership numbers though, so I can confirm whether or not it's um still. Um, I, I would say it's still got very wide support. Um. I'm trying to figure out how many seasons there are. Oh, there's 12 seasons. Okay, I must have seen less than 12 10. seasons. I know I've seen season seven or eight, somewhere around there, when um, Leon, uh, the blacks are living, well, at least Leon's living with Larry. That's ages I ago. I think that's season seven. I think. Yeah, but, so you got heaps. You got heaps to go. There's so many good episodes though, man. Definitely worth a watch, especially if that's the bit that you're up to. You've still got heaps that I've seen, which I can vouch for and say it's yeah. great. So you're set. So You I know the I Olympics, should... there's a 24-hour yeah. channel, Seinfeld channel. On what the Nine Now app, there's oh, just a that... 24-7 Seinfeld channel. It's great. Kicks ass. I mean, how many, how many days straight of Seinfeld would there be? Probably only four. Yeah, they're just doing it in so order. Just, it would just it would just go through and then start again. Wow. <clears throat> I wonder how many people are watching that at any one okay. time. Time requirements. The show's total runtime comes to around sixty six hours, so it's roughly three days of watching TV, and you could watch all of Seinfeld and then do it again. Whereas you can do Peep Show in like an afternoon. So I checked when I started watching Breaking Bad. It took mm. me from February mm. to last week to finish Breaking Bad. So that's six um, seasons. five months? Yeah. That's a season a month. I know, it's pretty slow. That's not it? too bad, man. That's not too bad. I probably went off it for, you know, I think there was about two months where I didn't actually watch anything. I started watch Sonic Girls for a while. Took me uh, took me several years to get through the West Wing. Several years. I would love to watch that. It's really I've only good. Two seasons. It's really yeah. good, but it might give you like a warped sense of reality because you might think after watching the West Wing that uh, the West Wing that everything's going to be okay, but then you look out the, the window and you know Donald Trump's getting shot at and all sorts of weird shits going on out there. So yeah, Shooter McGavin's having a crack. Yeah. So did you hear? Apparently, it was an easy shot. In inverted commas. That's what mm. experts say that they yeah. used a sitter. Yeah. I and do you know that a shot went behind his head and in front of his head? My God. So he's he it, it was he was right in the in the throes of it. Of course. That is terrifying. Well, it's fucked because like, yeah, like I've sort of pointed out before, is that obviously the bullets have indeed hit in unintended targets as well. Yeah. So it's at a it's at a crowd. It's not like he had a clear shot at a guy that he hated. He's just unloading into it. a wall of humans. Just, yeah, he just shot at a whole bunch of people. Yeah. So, not that that's any better. You know, still still shit a shit thing to do. Um, but yeah, with the West Wing might make you think that everything's pretty good. Gravy, we're sorting it. And one thing we didn't talk about last week is the Olympic flag. This is one of those examples of the media. Putting up at you know, putting something like clickbait headline. They mm. they go massive blunder at the Olympics. Okay, um, flag massive upside blunder. down. Oh yeah, no! It, it, okay, what well, look? It was. It is. It is a fuck up. I'll give you that. It's a fuck up, and it's it's kind of unfortunate. But when I found out what it was, it's the Olympic flag was upside down mm-hmm. at the, which is quite an unfortunate thing to do. Nothing mm-hmm. can. You didn't like. But you can't even tell because there's no wind blowing. You have to be an absolute like gun. I had a hell close look at it when I was looking in the replay to try and figure out that it was upside down. Well, it's five rings. Yeah, three, three on the top, th- two, on, two the on the bottom. So that's yeah, the dead giveaway a, that, is yeah, that there's two so. rings on the top. But, yeah, it's kind of weird when you're attaching a huge flag to a flagpole. You're probably just attaching and no one's – I don't know. There's no checks and balances. But it reminds me of Bastille Day in France a few years ago. 
um, that's like the Australia Day for France. They had seven jets fly over the capital and they had three white ones in the middle and the two outer ones was blue on one side and red on the other. Very French, yeah. Right, to do the, the flag. And then one of the red ones was accidentally blue, so it went blue, blue, white, 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 red, blue. And it just didn't look good because the French military, it's just an embarrassing mm, the precision, thing to do. The precision, yes, right. Yeah. And that's I, don't think you're, I don't think you're giving this um, flag thing it's, um, enough uh, scrutiny. It's pretty bad. It's the worst thing I've ever seen at the Olympics. It's got to be the worst thing I've ever seen. It's a, and you've seen it's a mockery. They're making a mockery of the Olympics. This is, a, this is all on purpose. The French are doing it on purpose. What they are, okay, so what the French are, are a bunch of God-hating, uh, power structure-hating people. They're hanging the flag up upside down. It's a protest. We all know it's a protest. The horsewoman trained how to hand the flag to the people who then raise the flag. She's done a switcheroo. It's definitely a big fuck you. To it's the a big anti-establishment thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's an anti-establishment yeah. thing. Yeah, we won't be told what to do. And that's what the whole of the opening ceremony was. It was burning castles. It was beheadings. It was hanging flags upside down and tasteless, tasteless depictions of, of Christianity. Tasteless. <laughs> It reminds me, I was watching Radham at Woodstock in 99 mm -hmm. and at the end they've got this American flag. It's the right way up on this occasion but across one of the, the basis speakers and then in their last song the, the flag just somehow lights up, obviously intentionally. Mm -hmm. I was like, pretty badass, burning a flag. But everyone was loving it. Yeah, it's like that lyric that I like to bring up uh, about Limp Bizkit where they say, we've got the fire or we've got the torches to burn this motherfucker down. Down. So, like, yeah, anti-establishment music. It's all good stuff. It's all good fun. Burn it down. Bloody oath. Um, that's about all we got time for. Is that right? Confirmed. It's been a pleasure. Nate, thanks for coming in. Thank usual. you very much. Um, we'll be back doing this again next time. Uh, drop us a comment. If you've made it this far in the video, you're one of uh, the very few. Chuck a comment in. Let us know what you thought. Uh, good or bad, we don't mind, do we? Certainly not. Nah. I don't We're think good we're going to get any comments. Oh, no, we will. Definitely. You said it. You said it at the start, man. This is like going to be the best episode ever, didn't you? You had a premonition. Yeah, I'm not sure if we lived up to my premonition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be critical. Uh, until next time. Rock and roll. Take care.